unpack. We unpack. We unpack. Coming to your live box and ego unpack. Yeah. We unpack. We unpack. We unpack. You have been bamboozled, hoodwinked, led astray by Eddie Hearn, Tyson Fury, his team, and Anthony Joshua. And I want to respond to what Eddie Hearn has said in a recent interview, claiming that Wilder winning the arbitration was unforeseen and, you know, unprecedented or whatever. We're going to clear that up in this video. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button, also subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. Now, where do I begin? I want to get started. I'm going to try to give you guys a condensed version and give boxing a history lesson. Before I get started, let me let you know what's going on. Wilder Fury 3 is next. Both fighters have signed for the fight. Wilder defeated Tyson Fury in court in a mediation that escalated to an arbitration that was later won by a judge rendering the decision in favor of Deontay Wilder. Now you see Wilder hard at work gearing up for the rematch. Now, before I get started, listen to what Eddie Hearn said. Eddie Hearn, you know, in an attempt which Ego Stradamus predicted, instead of just holding the L, he got people gassed up and made them believe that Joshua Fury was next and got people's hopes up for nothing, as I predicted, instead of just holding that L, Eddie Hearn is making it sound like what happened with Wilder was fishy or it stinks. And I want to show you that is absolutely not in this particular video. So before I get started, listen to Eddie Hearn's response, him trying to, you know, perform damage control and explain and explain away why it's not his fault roll the clip is the the award that was expected if they won was damages okay it's very unusual for an arbitrator to order a rematch with a set date you know and this is why i think the whole thing completely stinks by the way so in answer to your question when you're told by tyson fury's team consistently that the arbitration will have no effect on the AJ against Tyson Fury fight, and we can't get any access. So right then and there, you guys just heard Eddie Hearn. You know, he's trying to make his side, Anthony Joshua, Team Joshua, Eddie Hearn, rematch room, not guilty. But they, in fact, actually are guilty in this very situation. See, the thing is, it's how am I just a little YouTuber with the channel, and I'm able to have prophesized and seen the era of his ways wilder had this man tyson fury in court and yet and still they tried to start negotiations and book another fight without knowing and eddie hearn is claiming this has never happened and since when does a judge have a date in fact the judge didn't have a date he says you must fight by a certain date the judge says they can also if you read the arbitration Eddie Hearn's putting out more misinformation, you know, his own promoter. Eddie Hearn is saying that it's this is unprecedented and this doesn't make sense and this and that. But they have to fight by September 15th. And if both parties agree, they can extend it beyond that. But seeing how Wilder and Fury have not fought since they fought each other in the second fight in February, it looks like the fight will happen July and there's no need to extend it further and keep the guys out of the ring further but i want to talk about this eddie hearn claims he didn't see this coming and again me just being a youtuber i was able to predict this and then it ultimately happened for starters i don't know why people are acting so shocked this would wilder was always do they always signed a two-fight deal that would complete a trilogy between tyson fury and deontay wilder so regardless of what happened in the second fight you should have never trusted fury or top rank or frank warren saying anything else because wilder once again had him in a legally binding chokehold fury said he was going to fight in december 
all of a sudden that gets canceled. Pretty sure this is why he couldn't legally fight. He would be at the mercy of potentially a lawsuit and, you know, ongoing litigation. He wasn't able to fight. But like I told you, Fury says a lot. And if you believe him, you know, a guy with a past drug drug problem, then that's on you. But you see right here, this is an ESPN article from last year. Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder 3, being pushed back due to the fall due to the Rona pandemic. This is Dan Raphael, March 24th, a month after they fought, right? He doesn't even write with ESPN anymore. He has his own Fight Freaks United page. So that goes to show you this article was a little while ago because again march 24th a day before my birthday he doesn't even he doesn't even write with espn anymore and it says the third fight between heavyweight champion tyson fury and former champ wilder is still on track for their next bout but it will not take place july 18th as originally planned due to the say it with me rona pandemic top ranked chairman bob arum told espn so you have a history of bob arum admitting that they can't continue with it says however with the rona situation so fluid aram told espn that they instead would look forward to a fall schedule to get the bout it says clearly not aram said of the bout being on july 18th we don't even know if the mgm will even be open by then casinos throughout las vegas are closed and the nevada state athletic commission has canceled all combat sports you guys see I have highlighted it to make it easier. You could not guarantee the fighters that the event would take place on that date. We couldn't convince them or ourselves, Bob Aram said. Where were we going to train for? It just makes no sense. You just have to take a step back. How are you going to sell tickets? It's absolutely ridiculous to say the fight is on when the British can't even get there. Right? It says thousands of Furies fans traveled to the Wilder fight in L.A. So everybody has to take a step back. Boxing is not isolated. It's part of what's happening in the world, Bob Arum said. So possibly the fight will be in early October. Key word, operative word being possibly, right? Arum has said he's been in touch with Wilder's co-manager, Al Heyman, the head of PBC, and they are on the same page. Quote, Al and his people are in touch with us all the time. We see things the same way. We'll be very, very cautious moving ahead and pray this will all be over at a particular time and we'll be smart about making plans. Nobody has ever experienced anything like this before. So this is an old article delving into the realities and hardships that were caused by the pandemic. Months after this was published that, and there are multiple art, this is just one of them and I'm giving you the condensed version. There were multiple reports and, you know, Bob Arum pushing the date back and checking in. And it was all because of the global pandemic. So for Eddie Hearn to act like he couldn't see this coming is laughable. All of a sudden, Tyson Fury got antsy. He, he wanted to fight. Uh, he didn't want so much inactivity or whatever the case is. He has erratic behavior and he tried to ditch this man and leave his obligations. So when Eddie Hearn is trying to clean it up and perform damage control and act like nobody could see this coming, you have to be foolish. We all know that Fury tried to bail out on Wilder, but the truth of the matter was it was the pandemic which caused a halt to the fight happening in July and ultimately why it didn't happen, a third fight didn't happen in 2020. So just because Tyson Fury decides to have this you know erratic behavior doesn't mean he's not liable to fulfill his duties in his contract so for eddie hearn to say hey they assured us before the judge even rendered their decision you would have to be a fool to have believed that and staged a whole nother fight now everything would be so much easier if eddie hearn just admit he was hoodwinked he shouldn't have listened he shouldn't have operated in the fashion that he did but that would be too much like right so that's not what you're getting from eddie hearn you're getting you know a bunch of damage control and things like that now 
I'm not a lawyer. I ain't passed the bar, but I know a little bit. Eddie Hearn is saying as in that clip I let you listen to that this behavior is unusual for an arbitrator to decide in favor of Wilder. But it's not it's not at all unusual, right? Now, when talking about law, again, I ain't passed the bar, but I do know there's a term called stare decisis. And it says, what is the definition of stare decisis? A Latin word. Stare decisis is a legal doctrine that obligates courts to follow historical cases when making a ruling on a similar case. Stare decisis ensures that cases with similar scenarios and facts are approached in the same way. Simply put, it binds courts to follow legal precedents set by previous decisions, right? Stare decisis, a Latin term meaning to stand by what which is decided. So basically, courts, everybody knows, you know, except for Eddie Hearn, who inherited a business from his father, everybody else knows that in the court system, you know, common law, judicial system, stare decisis, AKA, you typically see people who have similar cases in the future. Cause you know how they say history repeats itself. So the things that happen in the future or in the present have most likely something very similar, if not almost identical has happened in the past. In that case, courts, judges, arbitrators, they would use stare decisis which is basically precedent. Like if a, if a similar case, if we're talking about a civil rights case in 2021, they might look at se separate but equal or something that happened to Martin Luther King or whatever the situation is when deciding. So regarding Wilder and his rights and you know him winning the case, having a rematch clause and then going through a global pandemic, a similar case comes to mind. That's Lennox Lewis. Now, this is a UK, and Eddie Hearn's from the UK, a UK website, The Guardian. So Eddie Hearn, who's been in boxing, his family is in boxing, should know about this. Now you see the title says, Lennox Lewis delighted at a rematch ruling, right? June 2001, Lennox Lewis has expressed his delight at last night's court ruling which gives him a rematch with WBC and IBF heavyweight champion, Haseem Rockman. Now, in case you guys don't know, Lennox Lewis was knocked out by Haseem Rockman in that fight in South Africa. I remember watching that on HBO, right? He got caught, pretty much a one hitter quitter. At the time, Lennox Lewis, some people felt that Lennox Lewis was not fully focused and he got caught slipping. Some people said it was a fluke. At the time, he was filming a movie that a lot of you guys have seen with Brad Pitt, George Clooney, Ocean's Eleven. Some people even blamed that and said Lennox Lewis was such a big star. Him and Klitschko were filming cameos. And you guys see right there, it says, filmed cameo blamed for Lennox Lewis's defeat. Art mirrors life for Nicole Kidman, blah, 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 says, boxer Lennox Lewis cameo in the forthcoming film, Ocean's Eleven is being blamed for his shock defeat on Sunday. Boxing commentators claim the two crucial days the British fighter Lennox Lewis spent filming the Julia Roberts George Clooney movie was a disastrous mistake, which cost him not only his three world titles, but also a potential 75 million pay packet to face Mike Tyson. So at the time, this was big because he was thought to fight Mike Tyson and then he lost his title. While his opponent, Haseem Rockman, had been training for their fight in South Africa, Lennox Lewis was in Las Vegas to appear in the remake of the 1960s Rat Pack classic, right? It was crazy to think about being in a film so soon before a fight. And does he think that Julia Roberts will want to know him now that he's an ex-champion? Film studio workers say Lewis was paid next to nothing for the role, but was keen to take the part regardless. So this is all history that I'm giving you guys. Lennox Lewis was knocked out. Some people said he wasn't ready, whatever. Haseem Rockman tried to skate out of the immediate rematch. It says the American, obviously Rockman, planned to renege on the deal. So just in case, I love that word, but in case you're not familiar with the word. Renege. Renege. To go back on one's word. 
which sounds eerily like what top rank Frank Warren and Tyson Fury were trying to do to Wilder. To go back on one's word, verb, used with the object, renig, reneging, to deny, disown, renounce, right? Like basically take back. So let's continue. Make sure you guys smash the like button. Lewis had sued the new champion, Haseem Rockman, over a rematch clause written into their contract for their April 22nd bout, which Rockman won in the fifth round. The American planned to renege on the deal and was due to meet Nigeria's David Aizon in China, in Beijing, China, in August after signing up with Don King. So basically, Haseem Rockman was he got the titles off of Lennox Lewis, knocked him out. Some people said it was a fluke. Some people said it was because of the movie etc and he was gonna fight in china in august signing up with don king and they was gonna ditch lennox lewis and not give him the rematch clause that was in his belt however new york judge miriam cedarbaum has stated rockman cannot make a defense of his title in the next 18 month in the next 18 months unless he first fights lennox lewis with a rematch now mooted for september lewis is confident that it's just a matter of time before he gets his world title, which if you know history, he knocked out Haseem Rahman in the rematch, you know, proving basically he was the champ and it was a fluke and, you know, he was fully focused and it was a, you know, Lennox Lewis is a, is a G because he, all of his losses, he avenged by knockout, right? So back to what I was saying about the court case and precedence, when you're looking at Wilder Fury, it looks like the same type of situation. Two boxers, both in the heavyweight division. One person was geeked, he, he won the title and tried to move on and leave the other person in the dust, right? So Lennox Lewis said he was very pleased and gratified Judge Cedarbaum has upheld his right to fight for the heavyweight title. It's unfortunate, look, just like Wilder, Lennox Lewis at the time says, it's unfortunate we had to go to court to uphold a very clear right that I had. Same thing with Wilder. I would like to thank all those who stood by me during this time. I look forward to regaining the heavyweight championship. Again, as I mentioned, which he did, I have won the first round in court, and now I will do it again in the ring when I meet Rahman, Haseem Rahman, right? And here's the Los Angeles Times reiterating what I just told you. Raheem decisions pack a big punch. I've seen Rockman will either fight Lennox Lewis or he won't fight at all for the next 18 months. All because of a rematch clause and a court case won by, you know, the bad man, Lennox Lewis. That was a momentous verdict announced Thursday in New York by U.S. District Judge Miriam Goldberg Cedarbaum and a verdict that sent shockwaves through the heavyweight division. The decision which rivals in importance any handed down by a ringside judge gives Lewis the chance to regain the IBF and WBC titles that he lost in South Africa to Rahman. It cancels the Rahman, very important to what we're talking about. This is the Los Angeles Times, people. It cancels Don King's anticipated fight in Beijing, China, Rahman versus David Aizon that they already scheduled just like Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua try to schedule some bum fight you know that was bound to never take flight in Saudi Arabia and it didn't even sound like the money was all situated foils at least for now promoter Don King's plan to unify the heavyweight title by matching Rahman if he had beaten Aizon as expected against the winner of John Ruiz, Evander Holyfield, yada, 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 throws former two-time heavyweight champion Mike Tyson back into limbo, blah, blah, blah. Lawyers for Rahman have maintained the contract with Lewis was unenforceable. Sounds exactly like Tyson Fury's team. Tyson Fury's team said Wilder's contract, the rematch clause, had expired, which is why you go to court slash mediation slash arbitration so the judge or the retired judge in this case could sort it out and interpret the contract. Plus, what was working in Deontay Wilder's favor is the fact that we had a global pandemic that nobody can control. So at the end of the day, this is precedent. This, this case with Lennox Lewis and Haseem Rahman, virtually the same thing in the same glamour division, is what Wilder went through. So 
I understand why Weinstein ruled in favor of the bronze bomber Deontay Wilder. The judge Cedarbaum said Lewis would be irreparably harmed if he was not granted the match because evidence offered in the two-week trial conducted without a jury demonstrated the 35, and I think Lennox Lewis and Wilder might be the same exact age. I could clarify that. It says the 35-year-old Lennox Lewis can likely fight only two more years. Let's look at Deontay Wilder. So, like I told you, history repeats itself. So when you have Eddie Hearn, who's not a lawyer, who wasn't involved, and he's telling you that this is unusual, it's not, in fact, unusual. It's not unusual at all. Let's see Wilder's age. Wilder, 35. History repeats itself. Wilder was the same age or is the same age as Lennox Lewis and the judge herself in the Lewis trial said 35-year-old Lennox Lewis would be irreparably harmed. So he needs that opportunity. And even in the next two years, his powers as a fighter will be diminishing, the Manhattan federal judge says. So once again, I've proven my point. Oh my gosh, this is easy. This is why we're getting this fight. Lennox Lewis's court, very similar. His court case set precedent. And Eddie Hearn is just angry it didn't work out for him. So he's trying to make it sound like it's not their fault. But it is because they shouldn't have been celebrating. You know, you have to score the touchdown before you do the celebration dance. You know, that's like running towards the touch the touch touchdown end zone. And then you get within the, the goal. You get in the red zone and you start dancing and showboating. And then you fumble the ball. And then the other team recovers. That's exactly what happens. So you don't count your chickens before they hatch. Once again, another checkmate. And I had to give you guys a history lesson with this because Eddie Hearn, I wanted to make my response. He's saying that this isn't something that is usual. Like the judge, like as if the judge doesn't know what he's talking about, you know? And we've also seen reporters like The Athletic, the Lance Pugmire, he said it's a dark day for boxing because Wilder got what he was always entitled to. And he says some judge somewhere from some some city and state. But this is all perfectly normal. And I think I've demonstrated that with a historic case that was probably cited in this particular case. Lennox Lewis versus Haseem Rachman. Shady business, you know, trying to move on and don't let the champion get a shot at his title. And now Wilder gets the last laugh. Ego Veli said it. Are you tired of your YouTube videos not getting any views? Well, consider TubeBuddy. I've used TubeBuddy for years to scale up my YouTube channel. Now we're sitting over 200,000 subscribers. TubeBuddy is a browser extension that offers a ton of built-in productivity and time-saving services to take your channel to the next level. Use my link in the description to get started with TubeBuddy and level up your channel faster. We work it.